Hey there, I'm Tracy Rigdon, and this is the Contrast Project Lounge Podcast. Often random, but always relevant, always real, and practically nothing is off limits. This podcast is for you. Are you ready for this? Let's do it. Welcome back to the live stream, guys. Hey, how you doing, Jim? I'm so glad to see everybody here. We've got a few people in the audience right now, and I just wanted before... Uh, before we get started, I want to uh, remind the people that are in the audience, they can use the chat function to ask us questions live and in real time. And uh, if anyone is bold enough to want to go on the camera, you can do the same thing. You can you can hit the live call button at the bottom of your screen and we'll put you on camera. Uh, and I hope you brushed your hair. <laughs> so everybody oh, uh, welcome welcome my co-host mr jim alabiso jim how you doing buddy i i'm doing great but i didn't brush my hair you never did. my mother always calls me on it she says <laughs> like if i go pick her up to go to the store she goes she goes jim your hair's sticking up in the back <laughs> It, it's just style. Anyway. It's just style. Hey, Jim, we got we got something yeah. really. We got a really good topic tonight. And we have a we very do. special guest with us. We do. Uh, why don't you go we ahead do. and take the honors on that? Oh well, thank you. Well, I met I met Jace, Jesse a couple years ago. Uh, Martine and I went over to Epic Outreach, and because uh, she had heard about Epic Outreach and how they rescue animals and. And uh, the pigs, especially, and, the, and you know, she loved donkeys and and all that. So we went out, and we've been out there several times since, and it's been a lot of fun. And it's good to see, um, you know, the free range setup that Jesse has just set up over there. It's just so sweet to see dogs <laughs> roaming around and pigs rolling in the mud and, and horses walking around and donkeys in their that. little area over there and chickens. And it's just a really wonderful place to go. And it's like... Nobody's really in a cage cage, you know, mm-hmm. so it's a really wonderful thing. So anyway, so that's how I, I met Jesse and we've been there and volunteered there a few times and been there for Halloween events and summer events and stuff like that, that she has for the kids. So ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me on. That was quite an introduction, Jim, but um, that was, but it was very descriptive and a very good uh describe of what it is like at epic outreach so thank you both tracy and jim for inviting me on and allowing me to be here tonight i'm super excited to be here glad you're here well well, tell tell our tell our tell our viewers our audience uh, a little bit about what 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 exactly is it now jim was saying that you know you've got a farm out there and you got pigs and donkeys and all this stuff and they're free range why why in the world do you have so many animals out there and what is epic outreach so i'll give a, a just a little quick nutshell of who epic <laughs> outreach is uh, uh and what it is uh so epic <laughs> is an acronym for educating people inspiring compassion and so we're a nonprofit organization we started in 2015 and we really started the organization to educate and inspire kids to be more compassionate and kind to animals, people, and the planet. And so we would go into schools and teach kids by bringing in an animal, uh, doing education outreach with them in the school setting with the vision to one day have a sanctuary where we could actually rescue animals and Mm -hmm. actually bring people out to the farm sanctuary and have them interact with the animals one-on-one. That human interaction between the animal and the human, uh, there's a quite a big impact that can happen uh, when you do that. So our vision was to always have the sanctuary uh, where the rescued animals could then be the inspiration to inspiring people to be kind and compassionate uh, to each other, animals, and of course the planet. And so in 2019, we bought the seven acre farm sanctuary, Mm -hmm. which is on the north side of Jacksonville. And it's my old stomping grounds. My old stomping grounds. I grew up on the north side. (laughs) 
It's amazing. We're about 10 minutes from the airport, uh, almost into Callahan. And we actually bought the farm with a pig on it that needed a, a safe place to go uh, when the the people formerly were selling it. And so we started with one pig, then two horses. And today we have 68 animals that call the sanctuary home and get to wow. live their life out here. Wow. Let me rephrase that. We have 69 because we just took in a new pig today. So new arrival. I haven't even shared about her yet. Um, and she just came into the sanctuary today. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Now, now, now that must, that must take a lot of work and, uh, but but if you love what you're doing, it's not really work, right? So I, I'm guessing that you have a lot of volunteers that come out there. We do. Um, yeah, so my husband, it's it's a seven-acre farm sanctuary. We live on site. So my husband and I um, primarily live, eat, and breathe, and sleep this work. Uh, but we have a lot of volunteers that come out and help as well. Uh, the sanctuary and Epic Outreach, the mission, all of it has not grown over the years without the support of volunteers and without the support of the community. So it has really taken on a life of its own. Um, Epic started out as my vision, but really Epic has become its own entity and its <laughs> own life force uh, for the community and the planet. Um, and it's all because the community volunteers. Uh, volunteers are a huge impact, especially for the animals. And of course, for getting the word out, sharing the message, uh, and really like firm, firming that foundation of compassion and kindness for all. Uh, when they come out and help and, and are a part of a part mm -hmm. of the mission, really. Right, right. And yeah, and volunteering, mentioning, just yeah, from, I was from, just going to say, I was just going to say, mentioning volunteering, Jim, you've volunteered out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Here's my, I have to, I have to show proof. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting that donkey there's, love. There's, it is. It is. So what I was going to say, what I was going to say about it is that, um, mm -hmm is that it's, you know, you may think about it as work or whatever, but it is so rewarding to go out there and just, even if you're not grooming a horse or feeding a pig or shoveling poop or something, you're <laughs> just being around the animals. Right. And the spirit of the whole place is just a, it's just a wonderful thing. And, um, or maybe working with the kids, which is something we've, we've done a couple of times as, you know, um, and so it's a lot of fun, no matter what you do, um, you know, and, you know, and I look at this as the way I look at my dogs is that, you know, we kind of like a lot of people say, oh, Jim, it's so nice that you rescued these dogs. And I'm like, wait a minute, man, this is a two way street. We rescue each other. You know what I mean? Because they add so much to our lives. So, yeah. So just, you know, and what they say, you know, it's like one of the big uh, um, significant uh, factors in being happy is to be of service. So if you go over to Epic Outreach and just do some fun for the animals or do what Jesse needs you to do out on the farm, you, you'll have a blast. And by the way, you'll like her husband, Tracy. <laughs> if there's a concert I, I, anywhere within a thousand miles of Florida, he goes. He does oh, go. really? do a lot of concerts. <laughs> Farmer yeah. Jack. His name is Farmer Jack. He's referred to as Farmer Jack. Very cool. Yeah. Hey, uh, let me ask you, Jesse, uh, uh, what would you say is a particularly challenging aspect? Uh, I know you say it's seven acres uh, and you got so many animals, 69 of them. Uh, what would be one of the most challenging, you know, uh, aspects of running uh, a rescue like that? Doesn't sleep. That's the challenge. It doesn't sleep. No, so, you know, whether even if, you know, it's hot outside or it's there's a storm coming or you're tired and you just, you know, you don't have one more ounce of energy in you. You still have to get out there um, and help take care of the animals because right. they still want to be fed. They don't know what's going on. Um, it's, you know, it's business as usual for them every single day. And if anybody, if you all have animals, you know that they love to eat and they like to eat on schedule. And so oh, yeah. the farm animals are no different than, you know, your dog or cat. Um, they definitely know when it's eating time and they want their food and the pigs love their mud, mud hole. And if it's not filled, <laughs> they want water in it uh, so they can wallow in it. Um, like, so <laughs> one of those things that never ever sleeps so it's uh it's round the clock care 24 7 um and uh, i mean i do get to sleep at night but uh but definitely <laughs> you're constantly you're constantly thinking about 
how to, you know, make their lives better, make sure they're comfortable, they're happy, they're healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then how can we help the next animal, right? We always want to be available to help the next animal without compromising the current animals or, you know, what the mission is. So we're constantly thinking of um, how to meet that how need. How do you manage that? Like when you bring in an animal and are they going to get along with the other animal? I'm, I'm sure you know as an expert what animals get along with. That's why the donkeys are here and the horses are there, right? But right. So how do you know? How do you figure that out? Well, there's definitely a quarantine period. So we bring the, we bring any new animal in. We like to give them what we like to say is they get used to sights, sounds, and smells. Uh, so we want to give them the opportunity when they uh -huh. first arrive. We don't always know the history on the animal that comes here. And so we want to make sure that they have the opportunity to really feel safe and secure. And the way you do that is to allow them to adjust to their surroundings to make sure that they know that... Um, that they're safe. And so, mm -hmm. and you also get them on a routine. So we bring them in and we generally keep them in like a quarantine space. We also want to make huh. sure they don't have anything that they can pass on to any other animals, any kind of illnesses. Uh, so we want to ensure their health, make sure they get vet checked. Um, and then uh -huh. we start to figure out their personalities and then we can kind of figure out where they might fit best with the current population of animals uh, and then slowly introduce them. Um, there's definitely quarrels and things that happen, uh, but you have to let them work that out. And they usually do. Um, and before you know it, everything's at peace and everybody's, you know, in their safe little herds. They all pick friends <laughs> and they all, you know, just like human beings. They're just like humans, right? We all pick, we have our favorites and we all like certain personalities of each other. And so um, they do the same thing. So they find their, their favorites and who they like. Do they have you know, their favorite? Do, 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 do you find know. that some of them have their favorite music? We definitely have music playing in the barn, uh, but I don't know. And we have wind chimes in one of the paddocks, so they definitely get to, to hear nice sounds. Go ahead, Jim. You're going to ask animal, some of some of the. I was just going to say some of the animals are just really, really smart. You know, the mm -hmm. pigs are really like really smart dogs, right? Mm -hmm. They are. You know, I was just reading an article. I think it was yesterday or day before, Jesse, about the scientists that for the first time filled an orangutan doing something they thought only we did. And what happened was he got in a fight with another orangutan and he got a, a gash underneath his eye above his cheek here. Oh, yeah. Did you read that? He did. I did see that. Right. That so he was going, was that fascinating? He was going mm -hmm. through for the audience. He was going through looking for that right leaf. I forgot what it was, but it's known to have some healing properties. Right. Right. And he spent quite a bit of time looking for the right ones, like 60 minutes or 70 minutes or something. Once he found him, he picked him, and then he chewed him to get the juice out and in them. Right. But then the coolest part was he took the leaf that was chewed up and the juices and put it on the wound. Huh. <laughs> he knew what worked. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's. I just thought that was that was just quite amazing. But that kind of leads me to another question: Where do a lot of the animals come from? The horses and the donkeys, and why are they there? Why do they need to be rescued? I mean, they're all different, I know, but generally, yeah, they come from all different um, situations. We generally focus our attention on our law enforcement agencies, so your animal control. Um, um, places and then uh, the local sheriff's department because they often get animals um, whether they're running at large somebody let them loose or they get abandoned or they're in a cruelty situation like a hoarding case and they don't really animal control sheriff's department they don't really have the infrastructure set up to handle a pig or a horse or a goat and so they're generally equipped to handle dogs and cats and so for them to be in a position where they have a farm type animal it's not really good um, set up for that animal. Uh, yeah. So we generally try to focus on helping them. However, every now and then we'll take an animal from a private person, depending on the situation. But uh -huh. um, we do try to keep space open for our law. Just like today, uh -huh. we took in a pig and it came from an animal control facility that had a hoarding case and there were some pigs and those pigs really needed a space to go. Um, uh -huh. And so we helped out with um, one of the pigs. There were four of them and another rescue took the other ones. Uh, so, but they all come from different situations. I mean, mm -hmm. people often yeah. get these animals and they just don't know the 
what is needed to care for them long-term and provide for them. Um, And, you know, just like our dogs and cats end up in shelters and need new homes. So do these, (laughs) so do these animals. So I always like to tell people, if you're looking to adopt any type of animal, whether it's farm type animal, a horse, a pig, a goat, or a dog or cat, a bunny, a reptile, a bird, there are so many animals that need homes uh, because they're all, there's rescue groups for all of those different animals. And so really do your research for getting an animal and then look to adopt first before you go and, you know, try to purchase one from somewhere. I have a, I have yeah, a neighbor I, living down yeah. the street on Oak Street, Riverside, that uh, has a pig oh. in, the, in their yard, <laughs> indoor-outdoor pig. Pretty cool. And, and they, she has it there. And uh, the, pig's, the pig's name is Yeti. And, <laughs> so cute. And it's, there's a little sign there. It says, "My, if you see the pig in the yard, his name is Yeti. And and then she's got a little container with, you know, pig treats in there. And when I walk the dogs, they're always, you know, they come over and and they hang out and say hello to Yeti. So you can rescue a pig, and you're you can have one at your house if you, if you needed to. But you know, a lot of them are pretty fortunate because a lot of these animals might end up, you know, sizzling on a pan. And so a a, a, a pig is very very. It was I think it was because of you. And the farm that we we quit eating bacon and pork and all that because after you rescue a pig and you pet a pig and you play with the pig and you watch a pull them you don't want to eat them then you right. feel like you're eating your dog right <laughs> I know there's a lot of people out there that are going to be watching right. going I'm going to eat my pig but you know well that's just I, me. I was I was raised I was raised by a country boy and 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 I live in the country now but. Uh, a, a lot different. I don't have a farm. I got a couple acres with a garden. That's about it. But uh, I, I was ra- I was raised by a country boy, and 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 their mantra, you know, when you when you have uh, uh, animals that you're raising for, you know, for food, uh, their their thing when they were growing up, their mom and dad, my grandparents, who are both deceased now, they they told them, don't give those animals names, don't don't give them a name, don't go out there, you know. Because, because, because in in about six months you're not going to see them anymore. So, so that's pretty rough. Uh, now, uh, like I was saying, I you know I live out in the country and uh, in Clay County, and I was reading somewhere the other day. I was reading somewhere the other day where you had just gotten a donation of hay from the Clay County Fairgrounds. We did. They got they're, a lot of it. They're very. <laughs> Yeah, they yeah, it was from um from the fair and they are very supportive of mm-hmm. uh what we do here uh with the the sanctuary. They actually invite us every year to bring pigs to the fair to be a part of their they have a little red barn in their little old Florida uh-huh. section and they have all kinds of baby animals in there and so we right. We bring pigs because we really want to change people's perspective on pigs. Mm-hmm. I mean, most people think of pigs as a animal out on a farm and they associate Mm -hmm. them with either bacon or pork or something that they eat and we really want to tell people that these animals have their their value is a lot more and they're incredibly Mm -hmm. smart and they do make great pets um i always encourage people to come the pig behind me in the picture is a representation of jimmy who is uh, a very large farm type pig, and uh, he is, he will change your perspective on a, <laughs> uh, where bacon comes from, because he is just Mr. Personality, he comes when called, he will sit for a treat, he is amazing, he's smart, he's <laughs> sweet and kind, um, and he's one of the lucky ones, because he was heading to uh, to the slaughterhouse, and the family that had raised him fell in love with him, uh, mm-hmm. and then they asked him to, you know, come stay at the farm. And we're so grateful to have him. I mean, we, we just adore him and anybody that meets him just loves him. And right. we have changed a lot of minds on, you know, where bacon comes from. And people have stopped right. eating bacon because they met Jimmy. Um, Steve Tracy, they gave him a name, Jimmy. So, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, so. you know, uh, and uh, there's a lot of, uh, they're still, they still have 4-H clubs out in out here in clay county uh where they they raise them and take them to the fair to show them you know and get their ribbons and everything my nephew uh, lived out here for a long time he lives in uh tokyo now i believe it's tokyo uh but uh he raised he raised cows 
every year to take them to the fair and show them. And he's got a box full of ribbons when he was a kid. Yeah. We're going to have to get but, you up to the farm, Tracy. I you know, know you it. should come visit. I so I do. Sure it happens. I need to. I need to. I need. I need. I need to schedule a time to come into town. It takes me an hour to get into town from where I'm at. Uh, so I, I, you know, I used to. I used to go into town, and I would. I'd get a hotel room and stay for the weekend, and just cram all kinds of stuff all into that weekend, taking Ubers all over the place, you know, to go see everybody, go to the art show, go to this, go to the concert, go do that stay at the hotel and then come back home on Sunday night. Uh, and it, it, it I used Where'd to, I had the truck I had was a gas hog. So uh, I just started doing that. I, I'll, I'll come into town and, and spend a three or four day weekend, you know, once a month. And that's, that's it. That's it for me. <laughs> so, love, so I love how I can, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I can see uh, somebody commented that they have a pig that they adopted that plays piano and paints. And I was going to say, we have several pigs on the property that know their names uh, and do tricks. Uh, <laughs> one of them is named Moon Pie. And he actually he actually will shake his little hoof like a dog shakes its paw and he spins in circles on cue. Uh, so they are very intelligent animals. Uh, you can teach them a lot. So I'm not surprised that someone has one that plays a piano and paints. Pretty cool. <laughs> that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Well, you know, I mean, you know, people have been raising, you know, uh, pet pigs for forever. I mean, you know, some people just have a, a knack for it and, and they like doing it and not just the pot belly pig. Like you said, some of the bigger, you know, uh, bigger breeds of pigs. And even those, even those Vietnamese uh, pot belly pigs, that, they can get pretty big that people don't know. It's kind of like, you know, uh, they get a, a chimpanzee thinking it's going to be cute and cuddly all its life. And, and right. a, a full grown male chimpanzee is a big, uh, is a big animal. So, so let me ask you, uh, you know, it, did, do did you, you know, do you, do you happen to know, uh, Jesse, uh, how many, uh, you alone, you've got 69 animals and, and we know that. Mm -hmm. There's so many more, you know, animals out there that need to be rescued or need foster homes. Uh, how, do you know uh, what the, you know, give or take uh, an average, how many, how many uh, similar uh, farms or rescue places like yourself uh, that there are in Northeast Florida? know all of them i do know that we have several though so there are several um in the north there's there's a whole lot of them all throughout florida in the northeast florida area there are there are um definitely there's one in clay county um and then mm -hmm. there's you know there's there's others around um and then there's a lot of people that start um what we call micro sanctuaries where they actually have them at their home they might not be a full-fledged nonprofit like we are uh, mm -hmm. where they're actually, you know, providing a service, but they certainly help out. So we have mm -hmm. people that will help us if we get animals that we need, um, say a hoarding case or too many animals that we need assistance with. Uh, we definitely have a network of rescue organizations and people that will, you know, assist and help out, whether they foster or they actually take the animal in and then care for that animal moving forward. But not everybody wants to do a full nonprofit. Like, like we are at Epic <laughs> Outreach, uh, but it, it is a lot of work and uh, there's a lot more components to just animal care. There's fundraising, there's, right. you know, doing events and, you know, doing communication, Facebook, all of that, social media. It's, it's a full time job. Uh, but there's so where did you get all those, food. where did you get all those skills from? You, um, you, know, I, you know, animal care, you run yeah, a nonprofit, you yeah. the accounting, the fundraising. Well, They're not the accounting part. Math is not my thing. So I, I definitely delegate. And so there's definitely some of that helps us with that department. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I've worked in animal welfare for a long time, um, pretty much yeah. my whole life. Um, started out volunteering uh, at my local animal shelter uh, with dogs and cats uh, back when I was in high school. So been around and done a lot and worked with animals my whole life. Um, but I've learned a lot of the running of a nonprofit from 
others that have paved the path before me. So, you know, <laughs> don't reinvent the wheel. You can always learn from others. And so I have, and um, I'm, I'm very grateful that I have a lot of people in my court that help me. And I have a lot of people I can reach out to and ask for help. Uh, and they are willing to assist. Uh, so it's it's been wonderful. <laughs> you said something earlier that raised a little eyebrow. It's like you said something like when a storm comes. You have yeah. 69 animals on your farm. What do you do? Yeah. Like, say you get a weather report and say, you know, in two hours, we have severe thunderstorms across the north. What do you do? We get that question a lot, actually, especially during hurricane season. And there's a hurricane coming our way. People ask, what are you going to do with all those animals? We just hunker down. Uh, our land actually is high and dry. Uh, we do have a few low spots. We get a little wet, uh, but it dries out pretty fast. But for the most part, we don't flood here. And so the animals actually know best. Uh, if you allow them to just have a safe space, they know what to do. They know how to hunker down. And we just provide them with, you know, lots of hay so they can sleep and cuddle and, um, you know, really hunker down for the storm. Uh, but And we leave our horses free. You don't ever want to lock up a horse in a barn or anywhere because if that barn comes down or something ca catastrophic happens, they know best what to do. So we just put, um, they're all microchipped, horses and pigs. And so if we have a down mm -hmm. fence and an animal gets out, we have a way to identify them. But we also put in additional tags with our number on it so people can you know, get them back. Luckily, knock on wood, we've never had anything catastrophic happen. A few branches down, some, you know, Spanish moss here and there. But, um, but yeah, I'm pretty much just let them do their own thing. They know what to do better than we do. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. You have, a, you have a, a, like a little lake on your, you call it a pond or a lake? We could call it a, it looks like a pond. It's so big, but it, I mean, it, it looks like a lake because it's so big, but it is a pond. Um, yeah. It's a, yeah. And, and did you rescue the alligator in there, or is that just oh, happened gosh. to be there? People ask that all the time. They ask us what his name is because they think he, he is a he is a huge part of the of the farm sanctuary because he's been here so long. But he does not have a name. We did not rescue him. It could be but a you're herb. You're not going to eat him either. No, 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 no. We we leave the alligator alone. It's a it's a great education piece when we walk around the farm. But other than that, we do not mess with the alligator. We just. <laughs> Keep a uh, watchful eye to uh, make sure no one's going to be in jeopardy. But so far, uh, that alligator is not big enough to harm anybody yet. So we're just you got, do you guys still do the uh, the, the uh, stand up yoga? We haven't there? done that in a while, but we are getting people asking because it's warmer now, and we really need to do. Did you do one of those? Did you come do one? With us? No, no, yeah, but I know. No? Uh, okay. Can I remember? It was Kate Fallis that was doing Maybe. it with you. Yes, because yes, I know Maybe. Kate because we did some television together years ago. That's so, right. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we love so they her. do it on a they do it on a paddleboard, yoga on a paddleboard. On a paddleboard, it's, yeah. it's sight to see. It sight is, to see. and she's she's great as well. You know, and that's a great place to do it because the spirit over there is just like. We're doing a Reiki class this weekend, Reiki and sound wave oh. healing. So that's that would be, be right uh, yeah, I was reading about that. And I believe uh, that was uh, with uh, Jade Paws. Jade Paws. Yep. With Dor her name is Dorian and she and runs Jade Paws and she does Jade Reiki. Pods. She comes actually to the farm a lot and does Reiki for the animals, especially right. when we have a new arrival. She really comes in and helps them to release energy, uh, make them feel at ease. Uh, she's been a huge impact for the sanctuary and the animals uh, and really uh -huh. helping them. So she's going she to be in, she may, to the farm. And she may be in the audience right now. I can't see names on the audience oh. members, but uh, yeah, she might be. <laughs> she's okay. waiting on us to call her out. <laughs> Now, now on all these, all these, yeah, so all these. Lot, there's a bit more to the. I don't know. I know. That, there, I was just there's, saying, there's a bit more to the farm than than just you know the animals themselves. You know, there's yeah. There's that, the well, that's what I, and, you know. That's what I was thinking. Rigging. You know, it sounds like so much. You know, I know. I'm, I trust me. I know it's a lot of work, but uh, but mm -hmm. the fun stuff you have going on, and you were talking about uh, you know doing education. How do you integrate you know educational programs? uh into the different aspects of the farm uh, you know i'm i mean i can only i can only imagine but you know how do you how do you approach 
uh, the educational outreach aspect of that, like field trips and stuff well, like that? We have, yeah, we invite school trips. We have um, homeschool groups that come out. The Girl Scouts come out. They're actually coming out in a couple of weeks and they we do some gardening. So they get their hands dirty. They get in the garden. We grow food for the animals. Uh, and then we also we take them on a tour of the farm, but we really go on mm -hmm. like a scavenger hunt. And we look around the farm at the different things like the compost pile. There's lots to learn about that. We talk about, you know, pigs don't sweat. It's a really cool concept for people because people don't understand <laughs> that. So we talk about why pigs get in mud because they don't naturally sweat. Uh, so it is very educational. And we also have mm -hmm. children's books. So I've written and illustrated uh, several children's books, co-authored mm -hmm. some of them uh, and illustrated uh, every one of them. And so we tell the story about the animals at the sanctuary. We have some for young readers and then some for inter intermedial age um, readers. Um, but I've had adults read the stories and they love them. And they all talk about <laughs> kindness, compassion, animals, friendship. Um, and so it's, it's, um, that's how we do it. Uh, so we give away those books, but we also have ways that kids come out and we actually are starting a reading program this summer uh, with the Girl Scouts next week uh, to kick oh, off nice. some reading that the kids can come read to the animals at the sanctuary. Um, and so that's kind of how we get the education piece in uh, for, for kids. So I've got, I got four of the books up here. I got Oliver and, and Wendy yeah. Flock and which, which one, can you just pick one out that you like the best and just talk about that one book and just, Tell, what, oh. tell us what the message is for a minute, you know. Yeah, well, they're one. all wonderful. The other two, the other, um, I should say the other two books uh, are uh, dog books as well. So uh, these huh. are the farm related animals, um, but they're they're all wonderful. I don't, I can't pick one, but I'll talk about the Oliver, Oliver's big problem, uh, because it talks about a pig uh, and it talks about Oliver, who was the first pig uh, at the sanctuary. He was rescued when we bought the sanctuary. Uh, he came kind of with the farm and it really talks about how people get these pigs and they think they're going to stay small, um, especially when they're <laughs> babies, just like people get puppies and kittens and they expect them to stay little and they grow up. And when they grow up, people don't know what to do with them because they didn't do full research on what it takes to care for a large adult pig. And so Oliver needed a bigger space, a safer space. And so he came to a farm and, um, and so that's kind of what the the gist of the story. And so it's Oliver is one of our most popular books because it's people relate. They can meet Oliver at the farm, and um, and he's just like he's such a sweet pig. And it just it talks such about kind of the problem that we see and face with getting so many pigs um, that end up unwanted because uh, people mm. don't do the research. And um, pigs actually, in my opinion, are super easy to take care of um they're easier to train than a dog because they're so smart and they're actually really clean animals uh but you've got to do your research and understand how to care for them provide for them make sure they have enough enrichment to keep them busy because they are so smart they need <laughs> things to do so he's pretty popular and he's kind of like a celebrity over there he is. does he do <laughs> autographs you know, I don't have a print for him. Some of the dog books, I have paw prints that we put in the book for like kind there of a paw graph. I love it. I, I need it. to do a hoof print. That's a great idea. Never thought about that. So, so every one of these, every one of these books is uh, pretty much a different animal and has a different message. But the, but the core message is, is uh, right. you know, just getting to know the animals and showing compassion and love for them. Exactly. Yeah. Just like my hat here says, be kind. We have be a kind. hashtag of be kind and it goes on almost every one of our posts out in social media and any kind of literature we put out, we're all about the kindness message. And that is the mm -hmm. running theme. Um, the central theme of our mission is just to be kind uh, to everything from animals to each other, to people, the planet. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of what our our mission and motto is at Epic Outreach. My, uh, my, uh, my former boss over at Folio used to say, peace, people, and planet all the time. Yes. He said, he said it all the time. Peace, people, planet. Sam Taylor. <laughs> Love that. Love he that. meant it. He meant it. <laughs> he meant it. <laughs> Wasn't just uh, words. Uh, no, he meant it. Uh, he meant it. Uh, now, uh, 
can you share? Uh, I know that the books were special, Oliver special, uh, but uh, c- can you pick off the top of your head one of your most memorable experiences out there? Something that really, you know, made you stop and take a deep breath and just take, you know, just a big grin on your face. <laughs> There's lots of those when you have lots of people coming to the farm. And, uh, but I will tell you, I actually have the picture and I don't think I shared it with Jim, but I should have. Um, but there was a school that come, they actually have come several times now and they come on a big yellow school bus and they come every year and it's one of their field trips and they came. And you know, what's really cool is when you can get kids from schools that may never, ever go to a farm and may never, ever meet an animal like a mm-hmm. pig or a horse, and they actually come out and they can go into the pasture and engage with the animal. And this young boy, we have a large horse. His name is Buck, and he is a um, off-the-track thoroughbred. So he used to be a racehorse. So he's super tall, and he's just enormous, but he's a gentle, gentle giant. He's, he's in his 20s, and he's just really relaxed, easygoing. And this boy was so afraid to stand next to because these kids are in elementary and Mm -hmm. they're small. And so he was afraid. So we went on a tour and Buck, he was so intrigued by Buck and his size. And by the end of the tour, he was standing next to Buck and had his hand next to him and just smiling with this big grin because he got the courage (laughs) and the bravery to touch this horse and be friends with him. There was nothing to be afraid of. And I have, I captured the moment on film and I have the image and I use it a lot because the energy in that picture is just (laughs) incredible. And it just speaks volumes to what Epic Outreach stands for, which is to, you know, bridge that connection between the human and the animal and allowing these kids to just not just see a horse in a book or, you know, driving down the road and you see them out in a pasture beyond a fence, but you can't touch them. They can actually come here and engage with them and interact with them. And that's where the magic happens. And that's where the seed for kindness gets planted. <laughs> and it's just amazing. And it's a, we see, we witness it all the time, all the time. That's something yeah, never leave I, them. That is amazing. Right. I, you know, I have a, uh, the, the uh, people that live in the property next to mine have several horses. And I have to go in the back of my property where my garden is when I go out there to do that. And two of those horses, when I go out there to the garden in the morning, I go out there first thing in the morning, those two horses, and they're, they're pretty big too. They're big. And they're probably in their twenties too. I would say they're, they're large horses. They come over there to the fence and, and it, I've got that, you know, wire fence up there and they've got it all bent down where they lean over the fence and they, they sit there and nod their heads until I, until I walk over there and pet them. I have to go over there and say good morning Aww. to them. I have to go say good morning to them. That's, yeah. They're very personable. I mean, people think that horses, they're just, they're very personable and people love them because you can really, there's a spirit and a connection that people make with them because you just, you see eye to eye with them and mm-hmm. they are, they do have personalities. And they're, they're so smart. They're so smart. <laughs> so what's, what's the future looking like? Yeah. <laughs> What's your what's your what's your next vision? Your next step? That's a that's a great question. I'm glad you asked because I'm super on fire about it. Um, I mean, Epic Outreach has grown immensely, and right now we're on seven acres, and we really need to grow because uh, we have reached capacity on many levels for helping animals in need uh, to reaching people, and really being you know what the community needs and desires and wants is to have a place where they can go get out in nature, connect with animals, um, get their hands in the ground with gardening. So we are on track right now to buy a piece of property that would allow us to expand and meet, you know, the desire of the community to have this great resource in the community. And so we're on a mission to raise $3.2 million to buy 64 acres and allow Epic Outreach wow. to expand into what it wants to be. And, I'm, looking and, in my, I'm looking in my wow and see if I got how much? <laughs> $3.2 million, which, you know, in the grand Probably. scheme of things, the, the world is so abundant. It's really nothing compared to, you know, some of the things that are out there in the world. Uh, and we, we believe that it's... Uh, 
it's going to happen. So we know somebody's out there that wants to align with us and align with the mission to, you know, really the, the dream is to not only help animals, which we've talked a lot about animals today. Um, we've also talked about kids, but so many kids today are being cap, you know, they're, they're stuck inside, they're in schools or in classrooms um, and they're on tablets and keyboards and phones. And we really want to get people off the screen and into nature, get back to nature because that's really, you know, where your soul can connect to being creative, dreaming, being imaginary, um, and really, you know, just connecting back to being outside and getting off that. Tablet. People so need to, so need to do that. I'm probably yeah. going to get an email or two about what I'm going to say right now, but you know, I walk my <laughs> dogs several times a day, right? And then I'll see other people walking their dogs, but they're really not walking their dogs. They're walking their iPhone. Yeah. And their heads in their iPhone. The dogs wants to stop and pee or smell something or look at something or hear something. And they're not noticing. They just keep walking and the dog's getting yanked along. And there may be other dogs coming or a bicyclist coming or a runner coming. They don't have any clue, any awareness of what's going on. And the animal is not top priority when, when you're on a walk. Right. You know? And it's like, you know, Should it's be. like, that's why I think this is a really good reason, at least for me, just to get the kids. And, and well, it's not just kids. I can't just say the kids. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> every, all of us. I'm guilty all of, of it too. Yeah. Get it, get off the darn phone. I get called on it all the time. But yeah. I'll tell you one thing when I'm with my dogs or I'm on your farm, taking them for a walk. As a matter of fact, <laughs> this is the truth too. When I go to sleep tonight at night, Sama and Sky are jump in bed with me and Selkie do, my two dogs and my cat. If I start looking at my phone, Sama gets up and goes in his other bed. He's he's <laughs> he's pouting. Yeah. Because your attention yeah. your attention is not on them. That's yeah. right. My dogs do the same thing. Yeah. It's um it's pretty amazing. I mean one of the one of the really cool things is many people that come to the sanctuary by the time they leave after they've been here for a couple hours, they leave and they just, you can tell they showed up stressed out there. Something's on their mind, something's whatever, but mm -hmm. they tend to come here and they just let things go. And then by the time they leave, they're relaxed. They're walking out thinking they're going to have a really great day. They're hopeful. They're peaceful. They're rejuvenated and refreshed. And we get so many com comments from people saying it was the best reset for them to come here um so it's not just about kids getting back to nature it's human beings getting oh, back yeah. to nature yeah um, really connecting with not just animals but the planet uh, we have so I'm, many I'm, ideas. So, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry what did you say <laughs> i was just posting yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry that was good well you know you know uh and and that 3.2 million dollars when you just like you said uh, you know it's just a drop in the bucket when you think of the big picture, but that, that, uh, that, uh, amount of money will go, uh, a long way to not only just buying the 64 acres, but it goes to your infrastructure there and, and outbuildings and things like that. Fencing and Correct. Yeah, what have you. There's fencing, there's a barn that needs to be uh, rehabilitated. Right. We'll need some buildings. Uh, we'll need to put fencing in. Um, and then we'll have to hire staff. So part of it will be to bring in people and give them jobs that they can be passionate about and care about uh, to be able to help more animals in need, um, as well as be more open. So one of the complaints we get, not complaints, but requests, I should say, is that people want to be able to come here more. And we just don't have the staff we don't have the capability to meet that need all the time and so we'll be able to be open every saturday for a specific mm -hmm. number of hours we'll have the parking capacity to meet 100 cars showing up we can't do that currently on the seven acre property we have we have a com parking constraint so one of the things will be we can like open up and have people just show up and not have to worry about a ticketed event or how many cars are going to come here so it'll be it'll meet a huge need um, in the community and a huge want and desire from the community mm -hmm. that um, they'll have a place to go every Saturday if they want. And maybe even sometime during the week we can open up because we'll have 
staff and infrastructure to meet. Um, so that brings that that brings up an important question because people ask me all the time: Is it like a zoo? Can I just show up there? And we know that's not the case. Right. So can you let the audience know whether they're listening live or, or streaming it later? Yeah. If they want to visit the farm, what they should do. Perfect. Yeah. Currently, until we move to 64 acres, we uh, it's RSVP. So you do have to make an appointment or you can go on our events page. We do have some scheduled tour dates mm-hmm. scheduled for um, the next couple of months. Uh, and so people can go on our events page and see those dates available. And then, like I said, it is a ticketed event because we have to control the number of cars because of the parking constraint that we have. Uh-huh. Um, and then if any of those dates don't, you know, aren't doable for you, they can always reach out to us and send us an email, which is on our website as well. And we can schedule a private tour or figure out what might work best for them. If they have to come during the week, um, we can do that. But it does have to be scheduled. You cannot just show up. All right. So if I want to Very take good. Tracy out on an epic date, I'll have to. <laughs> yeah, not really. Hey, yes, you hey. Can... I... oh, I can't reach it from. I, I can't reach it. I, I can't <laughs> reach it from here, but I got me a I got me a Farmer Brown hat, and I'll wear it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if I can get uh, if Tracy out on an epic date, I'll just send you an email. Perfect. I'd love it. I'd love and then it. he's going to tell all his friends, I went out on an epic date with Jim. I will. I will. Cool. Hey, can we be like WJCT for a minute? I want, I want to like, sure. so if I wanted to like go on your website right now, which I'm going to do, what, where do I go? What's the, uh, Earl, what's the, uh, website, the website to make a is- donation? Yeah, epicoutreach.org. So it's E-P-I-C-O-U-T-R-E-A-C-H dot org. Epic Outreach. Dot org. And then then they can click the donate button, right? Yes, you can donate. Okay, um, everybody that's listening, follow along. Go to Epic Outreach. (laughs) This is great. (laughs) WJC is going to call me and ask me to come over for their fundraising. You go to epicoutreach.org. Click on the donate button and follow the instruction. I'm going to go make mine now. Yeah. So uh, I'm actually doing it live. So you got to take over right now. Oh, wow. Look at you. You can do it live right on here. There you, That's cool. I'm going to do it live on camera, but I, I can't see my credit card now. Mine's just but that. It, uh, that Trace, that, you got to take over while I'm making that's my a, donation. That's a, oh, no. that's a screenshot I just put up there. Now, if you look at that, folks, uh, when you, uh, if you're watching live, or if you're going to be watching this when we do post it, you can see that they do have a Donate Now link on their epicoutreach.org website. And you can have you can give $7, $21, $49, $210. That's the preferred amount. <laughs> but any amount. Or any, any amount that any amount. They're, they're, we're, 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 we're going to push our friends, fans, and followers to go for the top notch, the top tier. There you go. I love it. <laughs> well, you got to think big. You got to get that 64 acres. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so how you how you coming along with that donation oh, there, go. Jim? You got it? I'm almost done. I'm, I'm taking about that? my credit card number. This is This is very dramatic, isn't it? You oh, guys yeah. are very making... ambitious. I love I, it. I love I need, the. I need a drum roll effect here somewhere. Let's let's do it live <laughs> right here. It's awesome. We're doing it live. It's live great. donation. Um, I'm not going to read my credit card number out loud though. Okay. Yeah, let's, let's um, do it. as I'm doing this. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, the security code is okay, and then I click. Oh, it wants my billing address. Okay, I'll, I'll type that in. Jimmy, you made a donation for him. Cool. Oh, there we go. Carrots. An apple. Yeah. <laughs> okay, y'all. So I want y'all to follow suit. And um, uh, whether you're doing this live or you, you watch this later, you just make it done. There you go. Thank you, Jim, for supporting our organization. You just donated $3.2 million. You'll get an email copy of receipt. How about that? Great. How- Oh, I wish I could do that. I'd do it in a heartbeat. Oh, I'm so excited. (laughs) Yeah. So it's that easy, everybody. And you can do use Google Pay as well, right? Uh, 
Sure. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you can. I saw that up there. Okay. Cool. So, oh, I even got a I even got an email. It says thank you. All right. So there you go, everybody. Make a donation at epicoutreach.org. I've never done this on the show before. Ask for money. First for everything, right? That's right. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. All right. So you get. So you get your you get your all your acreage that you want, and then what happens? Do you start building things out? Yeah, we'll start building things out. I mean, obviously, it'll take time to, you know, get things where we want it to be, but we won't stop. But we'll still have the seven acre sanctuary we have here. Um, so there will still be opportunities for people to come visit, volunteer, things like that. We have our big Halloween event, which is our annual fundraiser, which, Jim, I know you come and volunteer sure. at. Super fun yeah. time. It's a family friendly event. And it's in October. And it's so much fun. We have a Live band, food truck, vendors. Uh, it's really. Oh, it's now a, you're talking. Of course, a ticketed event. <laughs> yeah. It's really. Fun. Yeah, the, when you said live band, it lit Tracy right up. <laughs> and that it was, was and, good. It was and, a, and food yeah, I knew truck. some of the guys. And, oh, yeah, the food truck as well. Oh, but yeah. the kids food are food. having a blast. It's Halloween, you it know, is. and they're doing all the Halloween things. And then you guys put up the. Did the, the, uh, the, the bad houses ever work out? I know I tried to hang a couple of them, but I couldn't get them high enough. I, was... I know they're they're still up, so we have them. I don't know if anybody's living in them, but um, I don't go <clears throat> check on them. But I should, probably should now that you mention yeah. it. But we do have them. Yeah, but see, yeah. I think I think they have to be really, really high up, have, and we didn't have moved. we didn't have a ladder to get them high up, so they probably need to be moved up. Might might be yeah. some get a really tall ladder or something and get up there. Yeah, this, the so the mosquitoes the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes and all kinds of other uh, flying critters are going to be up in the air real soon, and bats love them. They're good. Yes, they do. <laughs> hey, I got to ask you this really weird question before we go. I've, I've looked at on Google Earth, yeah, that epic outreach from there, and I see these big circles over there. Are those alien crop circles? <laughs> I hope not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Definitely crop circles. Oh, no, they're not alien crop circles. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Were they sod farms? Um, so NutraTurf, which is owned by Anheuser Busch, is um is right next door. It's our neighbor. So they, it's their yeah. crop circles and their turf. You notice how I, I created that setup and segue for that for that <laughs> yeah, uh, did. little bit of <laughs> little fact. Fun little fact. Uh, yeah. Proof. Proof positive that we do our research here. That's right. That's right. Well, listen, Jesse, it's been it's been a it's been a pleasure having you here on the live stream with us, and and you're welcome to come back anytime. Have you got any closing thoughts for our audience? Um, closing thoughts. I anybody who's on here, I'm. Thank you for joining and listening. And if you want to come out, go to our website, send us a message or grab a ticket. But, you know, just create more compassion. We can all create more compassion in our own communities. You don't have to come to the farm sanctuary. Uh, but I always encourage people just to, you know, be kind to one another. Because even if it's, you know, your neighbor, your coworker, um, your friend, whoever or your animal your neighbor's animal um or a flower or a tree right because we're all, everybody's going through something in life and if we can all just be more compassionate to each other and kinder to other things we could seriously create a world that is just rocketing on compassion and kindness um and it's <laughs> it's game changing i just i firmly believe that in my heart and my soul and i just want to encourage everybody to just you know be kind be kind to each other <laughs> That's every time we do these, Trace, I always leave with uh, an open heart, and I always feel uplifted. Yeah. Thanks, Jesse. That's great. Yeah, thank Appreciate you guys. Being this here. was awesome. Uh, Thanks for letting me come. <laughs> thank you. We'll see you guys. This was Tracy. Fun. All right. See you, Bye, brother. Everybody. See you soon. All right. Well, that's a wrap. Another fantastic episode of the podcast. You can find us on all 
the social media platforms, wherever you serve, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter X, threads, wherever. Don't forget to like, share, and comment. And on our YouTube channel, don't forget to like, share, comment, and smash that subscribe button. If you're streaming audio for the podcast, you can find us wherever you get your favorite podcast programs. In the meantime, I like to tell everybody, take care of yourselves and each other. Until next time. Peace.